Hey guys, it's Cece, and today I'm here to recommend some more LGBTQIA plus books. So June is Pride Month. I am doing exclusively queer books this month as far as like reading goes. If you want to go check out my TBR, I just recently posted it. I talk about like 17 books in that video that all feature queer main characters, and today I'm going to be recommending some that I have already read and loved to you guys. I have previously done a queer books I loved video, and you can go and check that out. I think that was back in November. November, and now I have 10 more books that I have to recommend to you, and they are all own voices as far as I am aware. So let's just jump in and get started and talk about the 10 books with queer main characters that I want to recommend. So today we are going to start with Dreadnought by April Daniels. I'm recommending this book specifically in this video because the sequel to Dreadnought Sovereign actually comes out next month. I'm currently reading it on my e-reader. It seems like it is going to be a great addition to the series. Dreadnought follows a trans girl named Dan who is not out yet due to the conditions that she lives in at home and then the superhero Dreadnought dies at her feet and in his death he transfers all of his powers over to her and gives her the body that she has always wanted. This causes a lot of problems because she has all of this power but she has been thrust out of the closet and there's no way to hide that. It puts her in a lot of danger both from her family and the people in her life but it also puts her in danger because she's now a superhero. This book is such a great mix of being really fun and then at times really serious. The world building is done masterfully. Every page you learn a little bit more about how this world works and that is only continued in the second book. The second book opens at like a superhero convention and it's amazing. Danny is a really wonderful main character. You empathize with her so so deeply and this book does a really good job of portraying villains as superheroes but also villains as people that you meet in everyday life as Danny faces people in her life who are transphobic and then specifically has to deal with a turf who's also a superhero and you think you know this person has to be good they're a superhero but they also have these really terrible ideas. There are queer side characters, there are multiple side characters who are people of color. It is a ton of fun and it's just high action and great. I highly recommend it and I'm personally currently really enjoying the sequel which you should look out for next month. Next up I want to talk about We Are Okay by Nina LaCour. Nina LaCour writes really great books with queer lady main characters and this is no exception. This book takes place over three days at the beginning of winter break for our main character Marin. The previous summer she ran away from home after she endured the loss of someone very close to her and she just really hasn't faced that loss or the round ramifications of what, you know, of her running away. But as she waits in this empty dorm room on this empty college campus, she's waiting for the arrival of her friend Mabel, and she's going to have to face a lot of these things, the loss that she left behind and the unfinished business that she left with Mabel because for a while Marin and Mabel were in a relationship. This book is quiet and it is quick but it is packed full of so much emotion as the main character processes this really deep grief. It is super character and emotion focused. It is melancholy and heartbreaking and so beautifully written and I just can't recommend it enough. Moving right along I want to talk about The Seafarer's Kiss by Julia Ember. This was just released in May and it is a Norse retelling of The Little Mermaid. In this book our main character is The Little Mermaid. Her name is Ersel. And then there is this ship that is coming by. There's a shipwreck and this girl survives. And Ursula starts to kind of form a relationship with this person. The main character of this is bisexual as well as fat. It's super complex and interesting and has this really great romance running throughout it. I always enjoy queer retellings of like fairy tales and this is a great addition to all of those books so I definitely recommend that you pick it up. Now on to We Are the Ants by Sean David Hutchinson. This book follows a boy named Henry who has not had the best year ever. In fact, it's been pretty terrible year-wise. His boyfriend killed himself a year earlier, his grandmother is losing her memories, and his brother, who is a college dropout, he has a girlfriend who's now pregnant. There is just a lot in Henry's life that makes it feel like the world is kind of ending, and the only thing that adds to this feeling is the fact that he's being intermittently abducted by aliens. The aliens have made it clear to Henry that they know exactly when the Earth is going to be destroyed and that he has the power to stop it, but 
at this point he doesn't really feel like he wants to stop it and he doesn't see a lot of reasons for the world to keep on turning. This is easily going to be one of my new favorite books of all time. I can already tell you it's going to be on my favorite books list at the end of the year. There are trigger warnings for suicide, for depression, for rape, and I just want you to go in knowing that because this can be an incredibly dark book, but it is one of those books that has one of the most interestingly written family structures that I've read in YA. A lot of the time family gets kind of pushed to the back burner in YA, especially when there's a romance involved, but this book really balances magical realism -y elements, it balances family elements, and a romance with a character that I really, really love. It's a hard read, but I think it is just so well written and sharp and worth the time, and I clearly highly recommend that you check it out. Next up I want to recommend Axiom The Last Hope by R.M. Piercy. This is a dystopian book that takes place in the world of Axiom, and it follows our main character, Ella. She is going into her final year of school. This is going to be the time when the world of Axiom, it makes a lot of decisions for people, so who your future spouse is going to be, where you're going to live, what you're going to do with the rest of your life. All of these decisions are kind of made for you, and then Ella starts to fall in love with her roommate, who's a girl, and that's really not something that's cool in this world. There aren't nearly enough dystopians out there with queer main characters. I think that it's just like a given that there should be more, but whatever. This is a really fabulous one. The romance is really perfect and balanced with the tension of the world and the kind of pressures that you get with a dystopian. It's just really, really fabulous and I think you should read it. Now I want to talk about Peter Darling by Austin Chant. This is somewhere between a retelling and a sequel to Peter Pan. It's kind of both at the same time. This is a book in which Peter Pan is returning to Neverland after like a 10 year absence because Peter is trans and he actually has been living as Wendy Darling in London. But at the time period, that is just not working where he is, and so he finally gets to return to Neverland and live as the person he wants to be. There is also a male-male romance involving Peter and Captain Hook in this book, which Peter is all grown up in this book. That is a comment I've gotten. Peter is like a grown person. There is an age difference, but Peter is like a grown person when he returns to Neverland. This is like a much darker take on Peter Pan, which I really appreciate. I've never been a huge fan of the original, but I think that this adds so much emotional depth and interest and darkness to the story that made me appreciate the world of Neverland a lot more than I ever have before. It's still magical. It still evokes that feeling of Neverland land, but in a lot of ways that I think are done better, and I personally am just a huge fan of this book, which is why I am so excited to read one of Austin Chan's other works, Coffee Boy, this month. So I personally really liked this one, hoping I like Coffee Boy too, so I highly recommend it. So now we have to get into kind of a CC standard recommendation, and that is Two Boys Kissing by David Levithan. This is the story of a lot of different boys who are falling in love, falling out of love, going through incredibly emotional times in their lives, and it is all narrated by a Greek chorus of the generation of gay men lost to AIDS. I've read a lot of different David Levithan books at this point, and this is easily by far and away my favorite of his, just because of the quality of the writing and the storytelling and the ways that all of the different stories are wound together. This is a trans-inclusive book with mostly queer men main characters, which is nice because that kind of doesn't happen super often. That element is not own voices, but the rest of this book as far as like gay male representation is. One of the stories of these boys does have some trigger warnings as far as suicide and depression go just as a warning going in, but I think that this is just a beautiful book. I sobbed through it. It's a teeny tiny little story that I finished all in one sitting and just cried beginning to end. I think it's sharp and it's different and it is always going to remain one of my favorites. I'm going to recommend one book that is nonfiction and that is Buffering Unshared Tales of a Life Fully Loaded by Hannah Hart. By the way, this is the first time you're probably seeing the rainbow nails, but there you go. Rainbow. Hannah Hart is a YouTuber that I look up to so much. She originally got her start doing My Drunk Kitchen videos, but honestly she is an amazing voice here on YouTube, a really wonderful queer voice here on YouTube, YouTube, and I mean, like I said, I look up to her so much. This is her memoir. It's just about how she got where she is today. There is this chapter on her discovering that she's gay in college that I just connected to incredibly strongly, and 
I adore Hannah Hart, so maybe that's why I love this as much as I did, but I think it's really introspective and sometimes hard to read, and it offers so much to your knowledge of Hannah as a person. I absolutely love this book. Second to last, I want to talk about Juliet Takes a Breath by Gabby Rivera. Juliet is a queer Puerto Rican girl from the Bronx, and she's pretty sure she's queer, and she's pretty sure she's a feminist, but she doesn't really know how to apply these terms to herself. She understands that being a feminist is objectively something that she is, but it has all of these connotations of being really white and having these strict boundaries, and she doesn't know how she, as a Puerto Rican girl, fits into the definitions of feminism. She is 19 years old, and then she gets the chance to go and be an intern for her favorite author in Portland. And this is a space where she gets to figure out the pros and the cons of feminism as we know it, how to apply intersectional feminism, how she's a queer woman of color. This book is just so good. I knew from the first page that this was a book that was going to stick with me, and it has. I constantly think about this even a few months after reading it for the first time. I know that I want to reread it. I know that I want my own physical copy of it. Juliet is an incredible main character, and as far as the atmosphere of this book, it is almost exclusively queer characters and queer spaces, and that is just such a wonderful thing to see. There's also an emphasis on queer POC only spaces, queer women of color talking to each other, and it's it's so incredibly well done. Whether you are already a feminist and you're just looking for something a little deeper, or you don't really know that much about feminism and you're just looking for a way in, I think that this book is perfect for both of those things. It's a coming of age story, it's brilliantly written, I love it so much. And the final book that I want to recommend today is actually one that I just barely finished, and that is Queens of Geek by Jen Wild. This is a 2017 release that has been making its rounds here and there, and now I am adding onto the stack and recommending it as well. Queens of Geek follows three best friends, their first time going to a convention, Supacon. There is Charlie, she has been a YouTuber, but she's just done a movie and she's starting to make it big, and then she brings along her friends, Taylor and Jamie. Charlie just had this really public, terrible breakup with her co-star, Reese Ryan, and she's kind of nervous about after all of that, and then she meets one of her favorite YouTubers, Alyssa, and they start to kind of flirt. And then Taylor and Jamie have just been kind of dancing around the fact that they clearly have a thing for each other, and it's been that way for a long time. Charlie is bisexual and Chinese-Australian, and, and then Taylor has autism spectrum disorder as well as severe anxiety. This book is so fandomy and fun and just lovely. Harley and Taylor are the two POV characters, and then Jamie just kind of obviously is there too, but he does not have a POV storyline. I really loved both of the romances, which is I wasn't necessarily expecting to be super on board with both of them, but I thought they were both really well done and cute, and there were a lot of elements of like Tumblr and Twitter included on here. Like, if you're part of a fandom, this is kind of a love letter to fandom as we know it now. The level of interaction, the way that fandom can make people feel less alone, how it can connect people and help you to overcome obstacles. Like, all of those things are so seamlessly incorporated into this book. Anyway, I really, really enjoyed it. I super encourage you to read it. It was done incredibly well, and yeah, worth the hype. I'm glad that I finally picked it up. Okay guys, there you go. Those are all of my recommendations for some books with queer main characters. I hope that you pick up some of these or some for my previous recommendations list for this month of June, that is Pride. If you're looking for even more recommendations, like I said, my TBR is full of a lot more. I will leave the link to my LGBTQIA plus Goodreads shelf down below. You can check that out. Also on Twitter, I am posting a recommendations for a favorite queer book every day, and on Instagram, I'm posting a picture with a queer book every day. These are all the places that I'm gonna be, so make sure you check all the links out in the description. What are some of your favorite books with LGBTQIA plus main characters? Please let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed watching, and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye!